All right, so what is one of the best skills you can learn to make money or even make more money? What's going on everybody? Your boy Juan Valdez here with another video and today, you guys already know, we're gonna be talking about skill sets that you can use to make more money or specifically one skill set. So for those of you guys that are brand new to my channel, welcome on over to the VFAM. The VFAM is a movement and a family of individuals that are striving to do a lot more than what society has out for us to do. Today, one of the biggest skill sets that personally for me has made me over six figures, have, has helped me with communications and has really uh, help me uh, get to the point where I am today is hands down sales, right? You guys may have already you know, heard about people talking about sales. You may have heard me talking about door door sales and all that stuff, but I want to talk to you guys about the nitty gritty about sales and how apart from just doing door to door sales, how it's benefited me in my life. If you guys want to see more videos talking about, you know, maybe sales and other skill sets you can use to obviously make more money, of course, leave a like on this video. And if you have any questions along the way about anything regarding sales, make sure you drop a comment below and I'll obviously respond to you guys. So learning sales made me six figures. Now when I say that, I don't only mean in a regular sales job, I mean it also made me six figures within other opportunities with including Shopify drop shipping, consulting, networking, and a whole lot more. And that's why I wanted to make this video for you guys because I know for a fact that this is a super valuable skill set. So uh, to kind of give you guys a little bit of background about me and my sales background, now, uh, my first experience with sales, of course, everybody's connotation with sales is like that used car salesman, like they don't really like sales because they know that, you know, people being salesy, they hear about all these different things going on. And when it comes down to it, like, you know, people don't really know sales, like how professional salesmen do it and, you know, how professional salespeople actually sell and in that, that kind of environment to be in. It's way different than when you go to a used car, a used car dealership and you have all these different used car salesmen using all these different clothes and all these different things that aren't even done correctly. I got Pluto here. One of them, he's probably, he wants to say hello. So say hello, Pluto. Here you go. That's Pluto. I actually brought him here down to Boston. He's been a lot to take care of, but you know, we're still getting it done. So my first experience or when my first time I was being exposed to sales was with, with Staples, right? I had a, I actually had a mobile consultant position in a local Staples center. So I was already down one because if you think about it, who the hell goes into Staples to get a phone, right? Staples is a place where you go in for, you know, office supplies, school supplies, that kind of deal. And they had specifically one mobile consultant position and that's actually what I got hired for. And going in there, obviously I had no sales experience at all. I barely felt comfortable going up to talking to people. I had to kind of just confront it because of course it was an opportunity. I was looking for a job, so I took it. And on there, you know, I would say, of course, I wasn't as successful because of course I didn't know the benefit of learning sales, the value of it. I didn't have any type of sales training or anything like that. So of course, when I went in there, you know, I didn't have the best experience. I wasn't equipped with the skills that I needed to really be successful in that sales environment. Of course, I didn't do as well. Now, after that, you know, that experience with, you know, Staples and doing sales with them, I transitioned into door-to-door -door sales. Now, mind you, I had no experience with sales whatsoever, but now, you know, I had learned, you know, the power behind doing sales, right? If you actually, if you guys actually do a statistic and you actually do research, you will learn that almost all the top world's billionaires at some point in time did sales, right? And a lot of them did door-to-door -door sales. Mark Cuban is a huge mentor of mine that I look up to and I learned a ton from him. He did door-to-door -door sales selling trash bags. That's probably like not an easy sell and he did that so for me i'm like when, I, when before i got into sales i was like you know, if i'm gonna get into sales i'm gonna follow what these guys is so that's why i decided to go in and look for a door-to-door -door sales job so i found a door-to-door -door sales job and i didn't make the same mistake that i made in, made in staples right i wasn't gonna go in there with no skills and not have any idea of what how, what to sell what i did is when i was first getting started my first week of doing door-to-door -door sales i actually bought a sales book literally called door-to-door -door millionaire and it was basically from a guy that did door-to-door -door pest control and had done a million dollars literally selling door-to-door. -door. So I started learning from him. I literally dissected the book cover to cover. For anyone that's doing door-to-door -door sales up to date or is thinking about it, I'd recommend for you guys to get that book. It's a huge help. Uh, it was a huge help to me. I learned everything that I needed from there. I equipped myself with the skill sets that I needed to kind of get started with sales. And I was able to, you know, get started with door-to-door -door sales and actually see success, right? Obviously, I didn't go in there and like 
first day off the jump, you know, get my first sale in. But I will, I'll tell you this, that I was able to generate sales a lot faster than a lot of people that were just getting started in door-to-door -door sales were. You know, obviously, because I went and took the time and prepared the right way, which I kind of wish I would have done for it. When I was selling at Staples, I probably would have crushed it. Yeah, so that's kind of my background with sales right now. When it comes down to the importance of sales, because again, sales isn't just like anything, right? Like there's, there's a reason why sales is important in you know, it's important for you guys to understand as to why, right? When it comes down to one of the first things is every single business needs sales, right? Mark Cuban says sales is the king of all. You know, every time that if you go, anyone that's watched Shark Tank, if I have any Shark Tank lovers here watching, uh, you probably see that, you know, when it comes down to it, Mark Cuban, one of the questions that he always asks about is, you know, the sales of the company. How are the sales going? How's the revenue? You know, what are you taking home on that? All these different things, but it always comes down to the sales that the company has. So of course, that's a huge aspect. And again, it, it, it's important because since every single business needs sales, that means that if you can learn this skill set, you basically will always have an opportunity coming your way or available to you because you have a skill set that every single business needs. Think about how many businesses are out there in the world. So uh, that's why it's one of the reasons why it's important and that's one of the reasons why I personally wanted to learn sales. Uh, alongside with sales, obviously marketing is another thing that every single business needs. So uh, if you learn any of the two, either sales or marketing, you're pretty much never gonna be without opportunities. So just a fun fact I wanted to throw out there. The reason why sales is also important is because everyone at some point in time will need to sell someone something or you may need to sell someone on an idea, uh, a project or on you know just a concept, right? You're always, at some point in time, you're gonna be selling someone something, right? Regardless of whether it's an actual physical thing or if it's an idea or selling yourself, right? Obviously, you have to sell yourself to, you know, if you wanna get a job, you have to present yourself real well, you have to sell them on why they should hire you. If you wanna, you know, get someone to listen to an idea that you have of a certain project you wanna work on, again, you have to sell them on why they should work with you, listen to you, things like that. So you're always gonna, at some point in time, you're gonna to have to sell something or sell someone on your, sell someone on yourself, or at some point in time, you're doing some selling, bottom line, right? What are some of the benefits of learning sales? You know, might as well cut to the chase and kind of give you guys some of the nitty gritty, some of the things that I personally find uh, to be really beneficial within learning sales itself, because of course, if we're gonna be learning new skill sets, there has to be, you know, huge benefit to it. First benefits of learning sales is, of course, you're gonna learn how to negotiate like a boss, an absolute boss in business. If you wanna get a car, if you wanna buy a house, Anything that involves you buying that you can potentially get a better price for, if you don't know how to negotiate, you will not get a better price on it and you will not get a better deal. And for some of you guys that don't know too much about me, I'm huge on, you know, getting deals. Like for some of you guys that, you know, follow me on social media, Instagram or Snapchat and see that, you know, I'm always doing all these crazy things and buying these expensive, expensive things. Don't get me wrong. I'm always trying to get the best deal on everything I do. I'm not... I don't just, you know, go out there and just blow my money crazy. Like I, I really try to make really calculated decisions on everything that I do because I don't want to just spend my money when I can potentially save money and use it for other things, right? I'm always thinking about the opportunity costs and all these, all these different factors when it comes to pretty much any decisions I'm making, especially big decisions. Every single job also involves being able to negotiate, you know, in a job, you need to negotiate with customers for different things, employees, suppliers, you name it, you know, you're going to at some point in time in any job that you have, you're going to have to negotiate something. That's just part of life, right? So again, if you don't know how to negotiate early on, the better. It's important because you want to learn how to, you know, be able to negotiate and talk to people without burning any bridges. Usually when it comes down to sales, right? People that don't know how to sell, try to negotiate and because they couldn't get the deal they want, they'll end up, you know, being on bad terms with the person that they tried to, you know, buy something from just because they couldn't get that offer. But in reality, the reason why they're in bad terms is because they didn't know how to communicate effectively, they didn't know how to sell them on it, and that obviously caused the other person to you know, it caused them to be upset with the other person. So you want to learn how to negotiate because if you learn how to negotiate, you can do so in a matter where it doesn't come off as offensively. Because if you try to negotiate and like lowball people, let's say you find someone that's selling, a, you know, some sneakers, right? And you, you try to lowball them and, and lowball, what lowball is, is if somebody's selling it for $300, you offer them $150. Sometimes people can take that as a sign of disrespect and people can get offended by that. So you wanna learn how to negotiate in a way that's effective and of course professional at the same time because you wanna be able to negotiate not just with sneakers but with cars, houses, obviously more expensive things. And of course, 
any deals. You guys know I'm huge on securing the bag. So of course you want to be able to you know, negotiate when it comes down to making deals and a whole lot more. So this is obviously super important as well. When it comes down to sales, you guys want to learn and master the art of closing. Being able to close is one of the most important factors of sales because again, no matter how good your pitch is, no matter how much how good your presentation is, if you can't close, you know the bet the customer or nor you benefits from the whole sales process, right? It all comes down to the close. The reason why closing is important is because asking what you want from people is you it's usually hard for a lot of people, right? Even for myself when I first got started in sales, asking for the deal, asking for what I want was not easy, right? Even up to date, like sometimes, you know, when I want something that's really like appealing to me and it's like something of someone of higher status like I always you know think about how I can ask in an appropriate matter because I don't want to just jump out the gate and just ask them for it right away right I want to figure out how can I do it professionally in a way that's actually gonna be effective and that's actually gonna work but when I first got started like that would be times where I would, no I would knock on doors I'd give them the super fire pitch I'd present do everything that I need to do and I still wouldn't get the sale because I would forget to ask for it, right I'd end up giving them a card and pretty much walking away and just waste you know a whole 30 to 45 minutes of my day literally talking to someone without asking for the sale and if you don't close nobody benefits from the whole sales process so you know you may have a good product and a good presentation but again if you don't know how to close nobody's going to benefit from it it's a true skill and art one can have once you learn how to close you're basically going to be a closer for life and trust me you're going to want to be a closer because when you're when you're a closer, you can get things, people to listen to you and a whole lot more. And that's how you really get your message across. Because if you just know how to, let's say, pitch someone and present, but you can't close up the cycle, you're pretty much not going to get your message across. You're not going to get paid because, of course, in sales, you only get paid on the close. That's, that's the only thing that really matters. So when it comes down to it, if you don't know how to close, it means you're not making money. So, of course, you want to you, you know, you learn this skill set of sales, but also utilize so you can actually make money this is an effective strategy that you guys or an effective skill that you can use to make money as long as you you know learn how to effectively do it a closer again gets people to agree with them and follow the directions example steve jobs steve jobs is a perfect example of a huge closer this guy sold people but also close people on why they should use Apple products and why they're so great. If you guys watch any of the presentations where they have any new Apple products and then where they're presenting, his one of the, some of his old clips, this guy was absolutely a beast, right? An absolute savage when it comes down to when it came down to selling everybody on Apple and why it was a great product and on actually closing, this guy did it all. And that's why, you know, Apple has been really successful because they had a huge you know, they had a guy that was a master of sales behind them. And believe it or not, like there's a lot of people that, you know, they're known obviously as specific kind of people, but they're in reality, like they're huge sales people, right? So obviously Steve Jobs was a huge salesman. There's other people across multiple industries that are just like Steve Jobs that are thought leaders. Like example, Martin, Martin Luther King, he was a huge salesman as well. He sold people on the, on his vision and his movement that he wanted to obviously start and that's why obviously again why he's known and he's been known for such a long time in the world and he will continue to be known because he was really good at what he did and believe it or not like maybe he might be labeled as something else but in reality he was a huge salesman guaranteed because he got his message across and he closed people on why they should believe on you know what he thought was you know really something that we should all believe in so that's just an example of two people that were like huge closers and really good salespeople, even though we may not see them as that or they may not be labeled as salespeople. And there's a lot more of these people all over. I can name these for days, right? I can make a specific video on just different people that aren't labeled as salespeople, but are really like excellent salespeople. So another benefit of sales is that you'll learn and develop persistence. Now, persistence is super important. Because again, you never get anything right the first time. You never get anything when you anything that you want the first time. It usually takes some trials and tribulations, and you know it takes really some true persistence to really get what you want. So in sales, you're gonna get used to hearing the word no all the time, especially in door-to-door -door sales. Trust me, because when I was going door-to-door, -door, trust me, one of my one of the things I would get used to every single day is like counting up how many no's it took me to actually get a yes. Like this is literally my mindset when I was getting out there and going door to door is like, how many no's did it take me yesterday to get to my yes? And what I would do is I'd play a game thinking 
all right, if it took me this amount of no's to get a yes yesterday, so I'm gonna plan to see how many days, how many no's today it takes me to get a yes. And consistently I started noticing that it was usually around the same kind of no's that it took me to get yes. And it made it, made me prepare for the day a lot easier because I know that if I got a certain amount of no's, I'm usually very likely to get a sale after that. So that made it a lot easier and trust me, when it comes to door to door sales, like you try to find any kind of tactics or strategy to make the job easier because it is not easy at all. It is, you know, it's it's a rough job, but again, it has huge benefit and the best skill sets you learn is incredible. Again, it makes you start also developing persistence and learning persistence in sales, makes you start looking forward to no's so you can overcome it. So basically when I was going out there, you know, obviously I was counting the no's and I knew it was gonna take me a certain amount of no's to get to the yes, but also it was preparing me so that when I got a no, you know, it was like a challenge, right? It was like, no, all right, bet. How can I, you know, how can I overcome this no and hit this guy with all these, you know, answering his questions, you know, getting rid of his objections, all these different things to actually get me to that yes, right? So it became more like a game, right? When it comes to sales, for those of you guys that are in sales, you wanna make it like a game because of course I know for a fact that again, sales is rough, right? So it's rough, but it has huge reward. You know, this is one of the reasons why, because of the skill sets, and of course, usually you can make good money, but it's not easy. So you wanna make it into a game. So for me, basically, you know, when I was getting out there, I already knew that, you know, we had a saying in my in the, in the office, in the sales team, saying that your job as a salesperson starts when the person says no. And that's true, you know, really true, because again, like, if the person just say yes, 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 from the jump, usually those end up actually turning into a no. People aren't just open usually all the time to brand new ideas. So usually the people that say no are usually the ones that after you overcome it and you make things make sense to them, they're usually super open to it and they're the ones that are gonna get you, are gonna make you that sale or you're gonna make that sale on. So again, it's important to make it into a game because if you don't, then again, sales can be a little bit tough, but I just wanted to make sure that you know, you guys know that developing persistence is important because once you guys used to know, you know, it, it makes things a lot easier and it makes you start looking really forward to, you know, getting that yes and what it takes to really get to it. Another thing is, of course, you, you will be more self-disciplined. And one of the reasons why is because, of course, in regular nine to five jobs, you can get used to, you know, again, clocking into work, barely doing any work, but still getting, you know, paid for, right? I'm guilty of doing that. When I used to be a lifeguard, lifeguards already entails like not doing too much work but I go into my job and I was already used to not doing barely any work I would you know a good amount of time sneak into uh, maybe like the locker room or the break room and you know try to sneak in a quick little nap that's you know that's the type of thing I used to do because I knew that there wasn't much for me to do and the job didn't require much for me to do so why not do less than what the requirement was, right? If the minimum is already to do, barely do anything, why not do less than that, right? So that was my mindset. So, you know, it's a lot different with commission-based sales job because with commission-based sales job, which I think anyone doing sales should go for, you're incentivized by the amount of work you put in. So if you don't, if you don't skill up, if you don't put in the work, you don't get any sales, you don't get paid. So it incentivizes you to stay disciplined, put in that work, you know, really learn sales, get good at it. The fact that it gets you into that routine of just getting used to putting in that work, then getting rewarded, you know, is a great habit to, you know, to get into. So that's obviously huge. I think specifically door-to-door -door sales even more gives you a huge confident confidence boost. And the reason why is because within door-to-door -door sales, you're gonna have to step up to the plate almost all the time, right? Pretty much anytime you wanna talk to someone, you gotta step up to the plate. You gotta, you gotta go up to somebody's door, literally knock on their door, wait for them to come out, and then you can confront them and pitch them. And when you're doing this, you know, people are in all kinds of situations, right? People are eating, watching TV, they're sometimes heading out, they're sometimes just getting in. You're going through all these different situations where nobody's really expecting you to come to their door and you're doing it anyway. It definitely boosts your confidence. At first it's gonna be tough, but once you're able to do that, you know, you're pretty much gonna have confidence for life because after you get used to just cold calling and randomly going up to people's doors to try to pitch them on a product to then close them making a sale after you master that or not even just doing door to door that's just my experience and i think that's kind of like the best kind of sales but once you master the the, the idea of going up to someone pitching them on an idea closing them and consistently doing that it's going to be huge i'm telling you guys it's going to be huge you're going to learn to go up and talk to anyone and communicate 
effectively. And that's going to be super important because later on, if you guys want to network, pick up girls, uh, do all these different things, you're going to want to learn how to communicate and speak to people effectively. And you don't want to be shy and not have any experience walking up to people and, and you know trying to get to know them. Because if you don't, you're going to lose out on crazy relationships with people. If I didn't have the confidence that I have within today and you know you're going to walk up and talk to people I wouldn't have the connections that I have today I wouldn't have the friends that I have and a whole lot more right the business partners so of course it's super important and of course you know if you always want to pick up girls or guys whatever the case may be you're going to want to learn how to do sales because you're going to want to learn how to do it effectively and learn the things that work right once you get used to no's when it comes down to picking up girls or guys whatever you know your case may be uh, it gets a lot easier. You know that you're going out there. Okay, maybe she's maybe four girls are gonna say no, but I know that the fifth one's gonna say yes. So you can kind of uh, start a game within it. So uh, I thought I personally like to share that with you guys because I thought that'd be uh, you know you guys would get a kick, kick out of that. But um, all the skills you learn in sales, you will use for life and in other businesses for sure. Once you learn sales, you will use that to start the next business because again, every single business needs sales. So it may not be you know your own business, but if you're working for someone else, you can help them in sales. It's it's always going to be needed. So you will use the skill sets within the sales at some point in time. That's huge. I actually implement it into my Shopify business and it works, right? So obviously sales is important. So uh, that's pretty much it. I feel like with sales, I'm I'm super passionate about it because, of course, that's that's what really opened a ton of doors for me. So, of course, I want to share it with you guys. But I'm going to cut it there. Uh, if you guys got value from this video, of course, leave a like. Also, leave me a comment below with any questions you guys have within sales, pretty much anything within it. Also, if you guys want me to do more videos on sales, you know, please let me know because this is a topic where I feel like I can definitely crank out some more videos for you guys within sales. And of course, if you haven't already, make sure you join the VFAM, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.